Good morning, fellow option traders. This is Jeff, and welcome to the Daily Scan for Friday, May 30th, 2014. Well, a bit of a surprise yesterday. GDP number came in short, actually negative. Not really a good indicator. They're still blaming the weather uh, from uh, this winter. But jobless claims came in a little bit better than expected. So I guess things just kind of worked themselves out in the wash, I guess you might say. And the GDP number should have been a big hitter for the market. But it took the punch, turned its cheek, and marched right on. So to speak, anyway. Uh, okay, and then today we have personal income and outlays, Chicago PMI, and consumer sentiment. All before the market open or right after so it should be an interesting day from that perspective okay looking across the ponds over in Asia we're uh, almost bearish across the board except for the Hang Seng and in Europe uh, we're looking um, mostly bullish across the board except for the CAC 40 and I'm pretty solidly bullish too um, I would say. Okay, so uh, the thing that caught my eye this morning was this uh, um, bearish headline up here and a nasty correction, but that's about it. And my browser and my laptop is acting really strange lately. So anyway, I tend not to even use my browser very much at all because all I'm interested in doing is trading okay um, looking at the futures here in the US we're looking like we might open slightly down gold is down to a dollar ninety overnight and oil is down forty two cents and from my perspective for yesterday you know I was looking at things um, after the market opened and at 3.30 in the afternoon the only thing that caught my eye was a Russell trade which did not trigger because I was looking for a specific credit so we'll take a look at that when we get to it on the A plus list other than that except for this gold position here GLD we're looking pretty good across the board here TLT is a little shaky from yesterday We'll look at that chart too. So let's get going so we can get out of here early on this Friday. Okay, uh, first up to bat is Apple continues its march upward. Still waiting for it to come down to our target. Uh, pretty powerful move when the stochastic stays above the 80 line for any period of time. That's uh, power, let me tell you. All right, Amazon. We have nothing live in Amazon right now. Um, we here too are trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Is it going to reverse this trend or not? We're not getting any entry though, no matter what. Boeing. We are in Boeing. We're almost at 100% here. Let's take a look and see. We're at the 9 cent mark. So we have the six buyers next Friday. Take a look at the chart. Probably not in any danger here at all. Here's our short strike. All right, Baidu. All right, it's moving down nicely into our target area. We may have something going on there uh, next week. Celgene moving down into our target area. We may have a trade setting up, although, yeah, we may have. That's what I mean about Celgene. We, we might, uh, we're getting higher lows and higher highs here, so that's a pretty good thing, I would say. We probably blew a lot of opportunities back here. And I tend to only do 20 deltas 
lately on Celgene. So those would have been some good opportunities back there. Chipotle. Uh, very powerful move on Chipotle too. This would have been uh, a good overnight candidate. Um, you know, if you want to just capture this and do an at the money, maybe at the open here. Uh, you could do the same thing with Apple. It's not according to um, CSS v2 rules, but it's definitely, you know, you want to take a shot, a 50-50 chance. Could even do it during the day today um, on uh, Apple and Chipotle because the moves are so powerful. So here's what you might do if you get in, if you can get in this morning with the expiration of today is it's just a 50 50 chance right so here we're looking at a bull put we're at 545 so let's see what kind of credit we're talking about here okay so this is a dollar credit for a 250 two dollar and fifty cent spread we normally would be looking for a buck and a quarter at a 50 delta but we're only at 48 here nothing's perfect we can never really get an exact 50 delta but this would be a good trade I mean you take a look at this this is a um, hundred bucks and you're risking you're not risking all that much you're risking a hundred and fifty to make a hundred so that's not such a bad deal so your worst loss here would be 150. That's not too bad. Might want to do that at the open this morning. Definitely not in the rules, but definitely, I mean, we need to think outside the box every once in a while too. Let's shoot over to Costco and definitely wouldn't do anything like that on this trade. We had earnings uh, missed by about uh, eight cents or so, nine cents, and it sort of hung in there. So our trade that was up here would have been good. We could have got a hundred percent of it, but we got out before earnings, which is really the advisable thing to do. But definitely nothing going on here at the moment. Chevron. The one that I talked about yesterday. Um, we did get a hook on this. So this actually... How did I not see this? Um, this actually could be a... I would do a 20 delta if I was going to trade it today. Uh, you get a hook up, but you closed below the open. <laughs> uh, I... I don't know. I might look at this today. I would say that this would be a 20 delta. Let me make a note of it here. And we'll see how it works out. This looks a little scary and shaky to me just because of the EMA bending down. And this thing cannot close higher than it opened. So it's of concern. Take a look at the Dow. And take these uh, this off of here. Uh, and the Dow uh, had a pretty good day yesterday. So those 30 stocks overall averaged closed higher than they opened, which is a good thing. We'll see if we end up with a lower high here, though, and that could be interesting. Igor, Igor is on a tear right now um, I wouldn't do this one as a you know like a 50-50 shot today I just would not do this one um, so let's keep moving here there's definitely no other trades setting up here FedEx is in a very strong move right now maintaining its uh, level here above the 80 on the stochastic 
Still waiting on that one to mature. F5 networks. I was playing around with this one yesterday, thinking about, well, maybe I could do a calendar. And you know, I was always looking for calendars to protect my downside. So that's what a calendar here would look like at the moment. Um, if I was to do a June, July calendar um, for the downside for a protection, a dollar twenty-eight or one hundred and twenty-eight dollars in downside insurance. Because I was just trying to figure out what F five Networks was trying to do here, and I also added a their call here, and you end up with a risk profile that looks this away with a 20 delta bear call but I took a pass on it and I'm going to take a pass on it today and if we take a look uh, F5 Networks is also in a pretty powerful move maintaining its stochastic level pretty much above 70 for uh, almost two weeks so that's a pretty pretty big move also GLD geez I just don't want to look at this thing oh man that's horrible my cost basis is up here at 126.74 and we're down to 120 this is really not good it's going to take a lot of patience on that one someday gold's going to come back though Google has had a very nice move for a while and it's coming down and approaching our target area, so we'll see how that works out for next week. LinkedIn. Uh, we tried to go to the well again yesterday on LinkedIn, and it didn't work out. We have a pretty powerful move going on here as well. Um, when your stochastic stays above, well, here it's above the 70 level, but when it stays up there, like this one has for almost two weeks as well another powerful move I'm going to cancel this alert <clears throat> I mean you have to recognize it for what it is so would I do a I guess you would call it a day trade 50-50 day trade on LinkedIn I might do that I'll put it on my list we'll see just a new undocumented technique here to just try to grab some more cash all right uh, we have 3m here is in sort of a powerful move as well and we're waiting for it to come down here for our target the NDX okay would not do a day trade on this even though even though these candles just are not long enough but even though it also has been maintained in a stochastic above 80 powerful move so we have our next target set for down here Netflix there's too much money involved in <laughs> NDX uh, Netflix as well very powerful move going on here adding it to my list for today still waiting for a target down there for our normal entry price line oh wow we got a lot of these that are just staying above the stochast the 80 level on stochastic or the 70 level uh, another powerful move going on here adding it to my list Okay, Russell was also looking at possible calendars on the Russell. Not really uh, all that expensive for this type of protection here. Probably would uh, not go that low though. Which would, if I moved this uh, strike up, it's going to cost me a lot more. So if we look at say 1110, we're talking $300. If we move up to um, 1120, we're talking 310. That probably would might be a more comfortable level for that if I was to do a calendar. Just showing you that's all. Nothing serious. 
uh, oops, forgot to take a look at the chart. <laughs> All right, so how are we looking on Russell here? Uh, you know, we're just kind of at a point here of indecision. This is the trade that I tried to get in yesterday. It was a, I wanted to stick to a perfect five to one risk reward ratio. So with the five dollar spread here on this particular expiration, I needed a dollar credit. And that's the way I put my order in and it never did execute as we would have needed a little bit more of a pullback here in the last half hour yesterday and we just it just wasn't enough and actually it did show me that the midpoint was a dollar for a while but the trade didn't execute which sometimes happens uh, on the cash indexes because um, they don't like to give you exactly the midpoint when you're selling or when you're buying <laughs> so um, you have to kind of like bend it a little bit towards the natural price okay so that one didn't work out so we'll just take that well I think we'll we'll leave that on there the question mark means that I'm not really in it so let's see how that works out if I would have gotten in it all right there we go now let's go to SPX okay same thing here on SPX very very solid move here a very powerful move it's strange that you have two indexes that are at odds like that and the Russell usually being a leading indicator alright so the only thing that we have left here now on TLT is this one trade that expires next Friday still looking for a new one down here entry on that CL Tesla if it's making a big move well it tried to all right it's coming down heading towards our target and last but not least on uh, this Friday is Visa which looks like it's um, in sort of a powerful move here itself I like to see price move a little bit more with the stochastic staying above 80 lot of choppiness in here and uh, that pretty much is it I'll wait for Visa to come down to this target area here and um, see if it really does reverse its trend all right that's it for today this wonderful glorious Friday enjoy your weekend have a great day thanks for watching and happy trading